child to go to. It is such a joy to be able to see all the kids of Sisters of Woods being great. Yes, it is.
makes my heart sing, makes me get emotional, makes me cry. I know what some of you would be being raised right now, but what for the grace of God, amen? They're learning Bible songs, hearing the word, they got joy.
David, and then here we have Jesus Christ, and they preached the sinless death of Jesus Christ, and they preached the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's what they preached. Faith comes from hearing. Romans 10, 17. Faith comes from hearing. Hearing what? Not opinion. Not opinion. Not, not, not personal opinion. Not what I, not, not traditions. That's not what faith comes from. Faith doesn't come from not wearing church hats in church. People get upset and stuff like that. Come on, get out of here. Right? Faith comes from hearing. Faith comes from hearing. Think about it. The thing that brings faith is the gospel. It's the gospel. Share the gospel. Share Jesus Christ. Share the cross. Share your testimony. Share what Jesus did for you. Faith comes from hearing the gospel. The gospel has to be the focus, people. It has to be the focus of what we do. Everything we do here centers around the gospel. Every shirt we give away, every ride we give somebody, every plate of food, every every time someone gets into the child care, every message and every song and every choir, everything that goes on here, those gifts are centered around the gospel. It has to be the gospel because that's what saves people. It's faith in the gospel. It's, it, it has to be the focus of our conversations, church. It has to be the focus of our meetings. It has to be the focus of our outreach. It has to be the focus of our sermons. I feel sorry for church members who attend the church week after week, after week and they hear watered down sermons where one verse might be read out of the Bible. And the rest of the time, all you hear is the opinions of a man. That's sad. That's not how it's supposed to be. We must share the gospel. Look at Romans 10 14. This is the result of being saved. Romans 10 14. Look at, we'll, go, we'll start at 9. That you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. You will be saved. This has nothing to do with repeating the prayer. Trust me. Look what 11 says. For the scripture says, whoever believes, verse 10, for with the heart one believes unto righteousness. Hold on. With the heart one believes, faith unto righteousness. And then confession is made unto salvation. Verse 11, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And then it talks about the, the, the result of being saved. Look what it says in verse uh, 14. How shall they call on him whom they have not believed? How shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? How shall they hear without a preacher? Truthful is the feet of those who carry the good news of the gospel of peace and, and glad tidings of good things. It, that's a result of being saved and sharing the gospel. These verses result in a true conversion. If you're a believer, your job is to share the gospel. Your job is to share the gospel. It's not the preacher's job alone. It, 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 it's, it's the believer's job. It's not the preacher's job. It's the believer's job. It's your job to share the gospel. It's your job to live for Jesus. It's your job to shine your light so the Lord men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. That's a prayer of everybody. That's a general statement. Listen to me. That's where confession comes from. Confession, and it goes into sharing the gospel. Preaching the word after you're saved. You don't confess to God, you don't believe in people. An empty prayer can never make you right to God. I can teach a prayer of how to pray. Jesus said, many will come to me in that day and say to me, Lord, Lord. Who calls Jesus Lord? It's not Muslims. It's not Buddhists. It's not atheists and pagans and people who practice Hindu and voodoo. Many will say to me that day, Master, Master, Lord, Lord, Savior, Savior. Have I not prophesied in thy name? Preachers going to hell. Have I not done mighty works in your name? People driving vans and serving food and working child care going to hell. Listen to me. There's going to be a lot of people that preach the gospel burning in hell because they never made a right relationship with Jesus Christ. 
Not called to be saved. Not hurt to call, I think you should say. Put your Bible to your ear and hear him to bid you to come and pull sinners out of the fire of sin. Put your ear down to the ground to the birth and agonized heart of humanity and listen to the pitiful wail for help. Go stand at the gates of hell and hear the damned entreat you to go to the Father's house and warn the brothers and sisters and families and servants and masters not to go there. And then look at Christ in the face whose mercy you profess to obey and tell him whether you will join heart, soul, and body and circumstances in the march to publish his mercy to the world. That is our job. Our job is to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. There's many people, many organizations that do a good, lot of good things, but we are not a social, we, we are not some kind of a, of a, a place that just does a bunch of good for people and don't share the gospel. We need to share the gospel. The gospel needs to be the center of everything we do. Look at how it's connected together. Look at this. Verse 10. Look at verse 10. Lost my place. Got to find this. Look at verse 10. For with the heart one believes, how can I be right with God? Your, your, your emotional center of your life. If, if, uh, if this was a starship enterprise, the captain's seat would be your heart. Your heart. With the heart one believes, under righteousness, with the mouth confession, Jesus, Jesus is Lord, is made to salvation. Look at that ties to 13. Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now let's keep going. Oh, got that. Let's keep going. Verse 17. Believe, believing faith only comes from hearing the gospel. Verse, verse 14. Hearing the gospel comes from someone sharing the gospel. Verse 15, preachers must be sent so people can hear the message. Look at that together. Look what it says. It says believing comes from hearing. Hearing comes from sharing. Sharing comes from people being sent. Let me give you some encouragement tonight. As I preach tonight, the gospel from this bullshit, there are three freeway ministries going on in three different locations, three different towns, and two different states. Right now, people are preaching the gospel from Jesus Christ. Dr. Abbott has a purpose for the gospel. Preaching the gospel. Look what Paul does. He quotes Isaiah. He speaks of beautiful feet. Those who bring good news. That's what gospel means. It's the good news. This was a time when Paul quoted how beautiful are the feet. This was a time in the history of the Jews they had been carried off in exile due to their disobedience to God. First it was Egypt, then it was Assyria, and then it was the Babylonians. They had been hauled off, stripped of their land. Then one day a messenger came running and shouting the good news. He was bearing great news. He was excited to share it. Hey, there's freedom! We've been released! There's a way out! You're free! You can get out of this mess! You don't have to live this way! Freedom in Jesus Christ! The messenger will run and he'll shout the Babylonians and let us know. God has given us a chance to rebuild our city. We're free again. The good news. How beautiful the feet of the gospel. How beautiful the good news of the man carrying the good news. probably almost given up. Many had watched their loved ones die in bondage to the enemy. Some probably imagined they, there was never a chance for them to make it. And here comes the messenger with a message of hope. Finally a chance for freedom. You know what happened? They didn't believe. Many didn't believe in the report. Many heard the message of freedom, but did not believe. They did not believe. It. They refused the message. Paul quotes Isaiah again in verse 18. Have they not all heard? Have they not all heard? Look what God says to the Jews. They surrendered to Jesus Christ. Verse 21. All day long I stretch out my hands. To a contrary, that means somebody opposing him, speaking against him, and disobedient people. I watched some come through these doors week after week after week 
after week and you hear the gospel message preached. You hear the chance for freedom. And I watch you leave and I see you on the streets and I see you on club shops. And I think to myself, brother, have they not heard? Have they not heard? Have they not heard the message? They've all heard, but they all haven't believed. I know you haven't believed because of the way you live your life. Many hear the message of hope tonight. And God has given me a chance to be the one to, to preach freedom. To preach hope from the bondage we're living in. Many, many, many have watched their loved ones die in addiction and slavery and sin. How many have loved ones die in addiction? Some before this moment have almost given up. Some of you. Many want to give up right now. But can I give you some hope? Can I give you a message of hope? See, God gave me the opportunity to be the one with beautiful peace now. Amen. I come here and I preach hope. I'm telling you right now, I don't care where you come from, people. I don't care where you're going from. I don't care what your jacket looks like. I don't care what your criminal record looks like. The Bible says this in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. The old things are passed away. And behold, all things are new.
Place your faith in the cross, the resurrection, ask Him to save you. Many in this room need to get right to God tonight. This is your chance. Clarity, Carol Jones, that's your off the over there. Everybody else has these two. Would you back that with me, please? Every head down here, I close. I'm, just going, to, I'm going to say a few things and pray for you. Many people confess that they're Christians because they said a prayer because of this, this, this chapter. Many confess they're right with God because they repeated Romans 9 and 13. They had nothing to do with the prayer. Some preacher told them that if they said those words, they'd be saved. That's not the gospel. That's not what the scripture says. The heart is where salvation happens. Romans 10 10. The mouth follows the confession. Do not go to hell behind some empty prayer and praise and not someone else. There's no life change. Don't you dare do that. I'm going to pray to you. Father, I pray, God, that you have your hand on this place as I pray. I pray, God, that you unite the ignite, ignite faith in the hearts of those who heard the message. I pray that they would not stiff arm you tonight, that they would not leave here without making that decision. There's many in this place that are hanging on to some prayer they repeated with no life change, with some baptism they had happen to them. Some experience they had emotionally. But the Bible doesn't say anything about those things saving you. I pray, God, that that person I'm talking to, that people I'm talking to, whoever it is, God, they would truly come and they would surrender. They would confess you as Lord. They'd make that decision to trust the gospel message. I pray for those in here that God are backslidden and have strayed away from you. They're saved. God, they, they went their own way. They've been living a miserable life. I pray tonight for the night for them to, do, to make this to you, the right thing for you, Lord. Get to the altar. Cry out to you. Have somebody pray with them. I pray, God, for those in this room that are just questioning their salvation. They don't know if they're saved. They need somebody to work with them. But they will respond. Find a place at the altar. Get along with you until someone meets them there. Father, I thank you so much for all you do. I pray that you do a work in this place that cannot be explained by man. And we'll give you the glory. Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand? Stand with you.